Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. So I'm back here with an update on our 2018 Ram 3500 truck. Uh, if you missed the review I did, the original review I did a little shortly after I got it, after I towed for about 4,000 miles, I put out a full review of the truck. So I'll link to that in the description. Also, last year when we came back, I did a review after 10,000 miles. Um, for you so I'll link to that and this is a review after I just went over 21,000 miles so I'm right near 35,000 kilometers so I thought I'd come back with a quick review on the truck and also go through some of the add-ons I've put on to the truck like the dash cam um, I've also put mud flaps floor floor mats things like that there's several things that I put in not too long ago so I'll update you on that so let's just go first with the truck it's a year and a half old now I think we got it around October 2018. It's been fantastic. I just no regrets in buying this truck. It's been a really, really great truck for its task, mainly to tow our, our Cougar around. And it's done a fabulous job. I say that it's flattened out the West. Before I used to, with the old truck, I'd go up mountains and you would really know you're going up and down. But with this thing, with the power of it, you hardly even know you're going uphill. You can go uphill at any speed you want, really. And downhill, the turbo exhaust brake is fantastic and the tow haul mode keeps it steady going downhill. So as you can tell, I'm really in love with the truck. <laughs> no regrets. Um, not really any regrets on the options we got. We got pretty bare-boned um, package and uh, there's nothing that I really have wanted that I have couldn't get. So um, I can add on whatever I want, but I really haven't found too much that I, that I need to add on. I have a few things in mind, and I'll be adding on things as we go forward. So we're at, like I say, around 21,000 miles, 35,000 kilometers. Um, so far, I have that little code reader that I got, the blue driver, and I've ran it through, and it hasn't, hasn't spit out any code, fault codes at all, so that's a, that's a good sign. Um, people always ask about fuel mileage. Uh, they say as the engine breaks in and everything, it should improve. Frankly, I haven't really noticed much difference from when I got it brand new till now. Um, towing miles, I get anywhere between 11.5 miles per gallon to about 13.5 miles per gallon. And that varies depending on whether we're in hilly country, curvy country, or just, you know, a big flat interstate where you're just basically cruising along. Um, and also wind can make a big difference, but the lowest I usually see is right down around 11 and a half, even when it's towing hard. And then if I'm babying it on a, on a flat interstate, I can start to see about 13 and a half. Um, unloaded without the trailer, um, around the city, maybe 16 to 18 miles per gallon, depending how, how heavy I get the foot into it. And on the highway, I get anywhere from 18 to 22. And, and with that rear end ratio 3.42 and the six speed transmission, I can be cruising along 65, 70 miles an hour and, and I'm getting excellent fuel mileage. So really impressed with the fuel mileage for such a big diesel engine. Um, there's been just one recall. I explained that in, in the, the last year's video and that had to do with the drag link it's called in the, in the steering suspension, took it into the dealer and and they welded, tack welded a few things, and that's been fine, hasn't been a problem. Um, the truck's had two oil changes now, and I'm coming up for the third oil change. Uh, sure, we're kind of like with this virus thing, we're kind of in lockdown, so I'll probably just leave that for the time being. I won't be moving around very much, but it's getting near the time period they want every six months. Um, I had to, last, before I left on the trip, I had both the fuel filters changed. They were at their, uh, their time to change after one year. They hadn't quite hit the, the mileage term yet and went in, got them changed, they've been fine. And I had the guy look at the rear diff and he changed the oil in the rear differential. Um, he said it was pretty black, he showed me it and he said that's fairly normal when you first get the, the truck, the, the gearing in there has to mesh together so you, it, can, it can cause quite a bit of rare but, wear. But, he told me, he said, you actually use your heavy duty truck. He says, I get so many people coming in with these big trucks and I open their rear diff and it's beautiful. <laughs> but he says, you use yours. And so I guess doing a lot of towing it, it really blackened up the oil. So during the last oil change, um, 
the guy kind of talked me into going with synthetic, so I went synthetic in the engine and synthetic in the rear differential. I didn't really find it made a huge difference as far as mileage or heating or whatever, but but he says it's pretty good to go with the synthetic if you're if you're really using it for heavy duty applications. So you guys can tell me if that's true or not. Um, what else we got here? Um, one thing I've noticed um, now that I've got some miles on it and towing that uh, the, all the trucks springs have um, kind of got rid of that kind of really stiffness they had when they were new. Um, even when I when the truck was new, I didn't have large clearance between the the bed rails of the truck and the fifth wheel overhang and I've noticed I'm getting a little more clearance because the truck now sits a little lower um, at the measured at the the tip of the, the the tailgate height there it was around 58 and a half inches now it's sitting more about an inch or so lower so I think maybe the springs have just broken in and that's kind of given me a little bit more clearance and leveled out the, the ride with the trailer a bit. Um, also, the ride has improved a bit as, a, as the springs and shocks and everything's kind of worn in. It was really kind of harsh. So that's one thing I come in my first video, I, I mentioned how the ride was pretty harsh, but it's actually settled in quite a bit. Um, also, the seats, we had kind of discussed the seats and and Andin wasn't really a fan of the seats because there was not a big lumbar support but um, she's been using a kind of a little back pillow and uh, on the way back from the states this time we had a couple eight nine hour drives and everything was fine I felt good after the drive and she she didn't have any any big complaints so we're actually pretty happy with the seats so we'll probably probably keep the seats it being an eight foot long truck the, the turning radius isn't that good so you really kind of notice that when you're when you're trying to do a u-turn or turn around um, it takes quite a bit of space to, to turn this truck around which is just a kind of a, a sacrifice you make for getting the eight feet, eight foot bed but I just love the eight foot bed so much that uh, you know and the crew cab too is kind of nice to have with so much room in the back seat to put stuff we really like the big back seat and the extra doors for loading stuff in and out and and extra storage when we're going and getting groceries and the eight foot bed with the, I can put my extra toolboxes in there and I have lots of room for extra stuff so it's kind of a, a trade-off but I have to mention if someone's going to get such a long truck it is it takes a long time like when you're turning in parking lots and stuff it can be a pain um, as far as I've checked the brakes some um, surprise there's tons of tons of pad left on the brakes but I guess with that exhaust brake I use it a lot even even when I'm not towing I'll have the exhaust brake on um, even around town or on the highway so it just really reduces the amount I have to have to brake hard anymore so the brakes are really gonna I think last a long time with that exhaust brake uh, another thing I've noticed um, the transmission uh, somewhere around 15,000 miles the the transmission I noticed every once in a while when it's when it's under a heavy load like towing up a hill and I got my foot into it and it shifts from a third into fourth I hear the, the slightest kind of a chirping noise kind of like a uh, just a very small chirp and it's kind of concerned me uh, I went online and um, a lot of people would, had mentioned this problem and there was all sorts of theories they thought maybe you could flash the firmware or if you changed the oil um, some people had changed their got their transmission swapped out other people it's been like that for years and years but didn't find anybody that it caused any great concern just happened to be something that happens so if any of you ram owners have, have run into this let me know i i'm almost at the point where the the transmission fluid needs to be changed i think 30 30 000 miles is when you're supposed to change it so um after this kind of stuff blows over i'll get it into the dealer and have them check that out the the rig's still under warranty i've got three year warranty um, or 60,000 kilometers I think on the whole thing but the transmission comes with I think 160,000 kilometer warranty so I'll take care of that and let you know what what happens with that but that's one thing I, I have noticed just a kind of a weird sound I don't even know if it's a transmission maybe it's something else in the drive chain but every other gear it doesn't show up it's only from when a gear goes from third into fourth and only when you you got your toe on a load and you get your foot into it like going up a grade um, DEF or DEF, I don't know what the proper thing, diesel 
exhaust fluid or something. Um, anyway, every every once in a while I have to throw a jug or two in there. Uh, they come in two and a half gallon jugs. And uh, I find when I'm towing, I have to put about two and a half gallons every thousand miles. When I'm unloaded and not towing, maybe 1500 miles or even up to 2000 miles. So, so that's not a not a whole lot they're they're pretty inexpensive to buy so it's not really a big deal and I just throw it in there and and it's good to go so i haven't had any problems with my emission systems yet so that's a bonus because so i hear i hear they can they can run into problems with them clogging up but i guess because we tow hard a lot with this um, i'm always kind of clearing out that that system and as far as towing i can't really calculate the miles I kind of looked at my, uh, someone had said the, the miles towed is in your uh, display, but I have the, the very basic display and I can't really find the miles towed in it. But I calculate, we go, we've, I've gone all the way down to the southwest, towed around there and come back twice now. So out of the 21,000 miles or so, I'd say we got to be at least anywhere from 10 to 12,000 miles of just heavy towing. So just so you know. Anyway, um, let's go through all the add-ons that I've added to the truck um, and let you know how they've performed for me. Okay, a few things inside. One is this uh, dash camera. I reviewed it last summer from the Casso, and it's been good. It's got front and rear uh, footage. You've seen some of the footage in uh, my various videos, a lot of the travel trip report type videos I use a lot of the footage in. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is occasionally when the sun is shining on the windshield I get these kind of weird colored kind of dots or, or uh, distortions. It's about it. Other, other than that it's been a, a good dash camera. Just plug in the, the card there. A 128 gigabyte card in it and it can, can do many hours of travel so and then it just overwrites itself. So if ever there is an accident or anything or if someone's messing around with the truck it has kind of a parking monitor so it records any video so if ever there is an accident it's a good thing to have and it's good for my, my YouTube footage. Um, another thing is uh, GPS here. I have a Garmin GPS and uh, one of my viewers donated me something called a goat mount which you can mount the, the Garmin on it. Um, what I did find though it's kind of loose I guess maybe because the Garmin's pretty heavy, so you know you're going down a road, you get quite a bit of vibration off of that mount. So I usually put a bit of a shim in there, reduces it quite a bit, but standalone it's really kind of wiggly. And then there's my blue driver that I put in before this last trip. It's a OBD2 sensor, and then I can I can read out my exhaust gas temperatures. Which is kind of nice to see when I'm really towing hard on on grades and stuff. I can see, you know, how 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 much the exhaust gas temperatures are going. One cool thing is I notice when it goes into its emissions regeneration mode, I, I saw the thing. One of these temps went up right over a thousand degrees while it was under while it was doing that. I remember we were pulling out of a park. Um, you know, I'd warmed the truck up and everything, and we were just coming coming out of the park towing and I was looking down at there and one of them was way over a thousand and we weren't even you know my my water temperature and my oil temperature everything was fine so it was just going through that regen mode <laughs> kind of freaked me out at first but then I realized what was going on so it did that maybe for about five minutes and then all of a sudden it finished its cycle and everything dropped back down so it usually runs around you know six to eight hundred degree range or if I'm towing a big grade, I might get up around 900 degrees, but it kind of freaked me out when I saw it over a thousand, but I guess that's what it does. But this has worked really well. Um, it seems to update fine, no problem with the Bluetooth. Um, I tried it on my iPad for a while, and then I've been using this little Android tablet. So I just lay it down on the floor there. I don't need to see it all the time, but it's just nice to be able to glance down and check the temps. And it also can do a lot of other readings. One thing it doesn't do is transmission temperature, um, but my truck has its own transmission temperature. And an update on the dash wiring I did. A um, little bit of a mod. You can see here I got my GPS and my dash cam, and then I usually run my 
backup camera display, I, I attach it to the mirror up here, but all the wiring um, doesn't come anymore from the cigarette lighter socket, the 12 volt. I have everything coming from inside the dash. You know, I'll just throw, throw some video up here of that mod, also link to it in the description. But anyway, I have so much room behind here, I put in a, a three-way splitter and I ran all the wires up through here. So then I don't have a bunch of clunky wires hanging around. Everything gets run like the dash cam runs up through there and comes back over there. So it really makes everything nice and clean on the dash. And that's worked really well. Some people thought I'd get loose connections and stuff because I had put in um, a three-way splitter for cigarette lighter sockets and then I just put the plugs in. But I mounted it with, I, I put them in with some uh, shims and I put some mounting tape to hold everything together. So it's been eight months now and I haven't had an intermittent at all. So, so far it's working out well. Next, let's go to the four add-ons that eTrailer sent me out for review. Um, first here we got the floor mats, the WeatherTech floor mats, and I'm quite happy with those. Um, the only negative to them is they're, they're quite stiff, so they, you know, they don't fall really flat. I've heard from others that the Husky ones sort of sit a lot flatter, they're a little more supple, but so far I'm happy with these. They, uh, they clean up really easy, you just pull them out and uh, hose them off. And, clean them up and they're good to go again. There's the front ones there. Show you the back. So overall I'm happy with those. So they're going to protect my floor underneath because you remember I just have the the tradesman edition so I just have like a really thin vinyl floor under these. And overall the interior, like I say, I have the tradesmen, so it's just all that kind of vinyl made for a, a work truck. And it's uh, been fine. It's really easy to clean up and keep looking good. Everything just wipes off. Get some of that uh, 303 protectant or whatever and wipe it all down. Even use my California duster, go in there in the desert when anything gets dusty. Just take the duster and dust everything off. Comes out looking really good. There's that pillow I mentioned before that Ann uses there for her back. Next, the WeatherTech mud flaps, and they worked out really well. I got a chance to really use them out at uh, Dove Springs BLM. It rained, it really rained one night, and I had to go in and out a few times, and it was really spitting the mud. So it really protects the paint up here, as well as not spitting so much back at the trailer. They fit really well, they've hung on really well. Like I say, they got a lot of use going through big mud puddles. No problem at all, and they clean up pretty easy. I'll show you the front one here. That reminds me on this front, I should show you one negative I found. I'll just crawl under here. So you can see the front mud flap there. If you look up here, there's a wiring harness with a crap load of wires and that gets a lot of the the spray even with the mud flap before the mud flap it was really getting a lot but even with the mud flap I don't really like having that connection all exposed like that I think that's just a recipe for disaster so I think I'm going to figure out a way maybe to uh, protect that a little bit better maybe put a covering underneath here just to keep keep some of the road spray from getting up into that electrical bundle there. Next is these visors. They're also a WeatherTech brand. And I have mixed feelings about these. I think they look really good. Like they're not like some of the ones that you kind of stick on the outside. They fit right in the channel there. And you know they keep kind of the, the rain off you and a little bit of heat but they uh, I do find when it's windy out, especially when it's windy, there's more uh, road noise when you're going down the highway. You can hear a lot more wind noise with the window rolled up and everything. The window down, they block a little bit of the wind compared to, to, compared to not having them. Um, the other thing I don't like is when you roll the window up, especially if you're out like we were out in the desert getting a lot of kind of grit. You get some grit in the window between there, it kind of makes a odd noise when they go up. Let me just go in and show you. So 
that sounds okay now. Kind of back in BC, there's not much grit. I cleaned everything. But when I was in the desert, you get a little bit of grit and it would really kind of almost make a scratching noise when it sealed against there. Didn't scratch anything, but kind of a uncomfortable noise it would make when it sealed. Anyway, I'm like, it's kind of, kind of just okay. I'm not like very impressed with them, but uh, I like them, but it's kind of on the fence about them right now. I think they're easy. I could just pull them off when I don't want them, maybe keep them for the the rainy times and then when I go down south maybe just pull them off and the final one from e-trailer is the tailgate shock the DZ I think it's called and that's been really nice everything's worked really well with it no problems nothing's loosened up or anything over the time I've had it After I posted the video, some people mentioned there was a, a torsion bar you could get in between that would fit in inside there. Um, I forget what the name was, but anyway, it would help you lift the tailgate easier. And when I read online, after 2009, the Rams actually had that bar built in. So with the Ram tailgates, it's actually they lift pretty easy because they do have that bar to help lift up the tailgate. It's pretty easy to lift it, but they it would slam down, so this has worked out really well. The hitch. Hitch has been really good. Um, no complaints there. I know in early, my first video, I hadn't learned how to use it properly yet, so I complained that it was hard to, to hitch and un to, to unhitch, but uh, I quickly learned what to do. Um, once I pull into the site, I'll put the truck in, I'll, block, I'll chalk the trailer, then put the truck in neutral. And then I'll just take maybe half the weight off of the, the hitch, and then this bar pulls out. And then down there, there's a second slot that I flip that thing over into and leave it out. Then I continue raising the trailer, and it basically just sort of starts to slide out. So it's really been really easy to unhitch. In fact, um, it's mated well with our Cougar, no problem at all, no clunking or clanking, no chucking, so I'm going to keep this hitch. It's been uh, a really good uh, setup for me. And an update on my most recent uh, upgrade or add-on to the truck, that was that DC to DC charger that I put in um, so that I can be charging off the alternator. And I put in this... Uh, I guess they call them Anderson power poles, but that worked really well. Um, it became came in quite useful on the way back from down south. We had to we had to boogie back, and we were going through. Actually, in California, it was raining quite a bit, so I was getting no solar. So rather than having to use the generator when we stopped overnight, I just plugged that thing in, uh, and I had the batteries fully charged every time we stopped at night. So that was a good update. Uh, one thing also, if you're going to install something like that, you have to make sure your alternator is capable of handy, handling the current. Anyway, I'll link back to any of these add-ons from the past if you want to go back if you haven't seen those videos. Well, there you go. There's an update on Big Blue. Um, any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. But uh, overall, good truck, good truck. Oh, by the way, people have asked about that black rim <laughs> compared to the silver. Um, when I was down south, I picked up a screw in the, one of the tires back there, and it didn't perforate the tire. Pulled the screw out, but I didn't really trust that tire anymore, so uh, so we uh, replaced it with the, the spare. That's why it's black. And I'm just about ready for new tires. It's got the original Firestone Transforce, so they're pre getting pretty worn down. Probably get us through the summer here, and then when we get it, hopefully we'll get back into the travel season again. Fingers crossed, everybody. But anyway, I'm going to put uh, new hides on on Big Blue. Till next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers.